Hi everyone and welcome to episode number 206 of the Karen Knits podcast. My name is Karen and I'm coming to you from South Central Pennsylvania where I live, where I work, where I knit and get into all kinds of other crafting shenanigans. I'm so happy to have you here with me today. It is Saturday, April the 6th, 2024 and it's, it's an overcast day. We've had a lot of rain this past week, a lot of rain and it was clear earlier this morning but we're mid-afternoon now and the clouds have rolled back in so hopefully we won't get any more rain we have plenty right now so if you're a new viewer thank you so much for joining me and coming by to see what's what on this channel if you're a returning viewer thank you so much for coming back for another week to see what kind of knitting shenanigans and other shenanigans i've been up to i'm so happy to have all of you here with me today i it just it makes my day that people will sit and listen to me natter ye for like a half an hour about knitting stuff <laughs> warms my cold little old heart <laughs> so, i thank you so much was that even the right where is my heart <laughs> broken at the wrong those it's not on that side it's over on this side <laughs> it warms something over in here <laughs> anyway uh, okay new people not sure what you're in for today regular people my returning people yeah you're probably up yeah you know what you're in for <laughs> when you come to one of my videos anyway it's been a busy knitting week I have got a goodly bit of progress done on I got a little bit of progress on one of my whips I got a decent amount of progress on another one of my whips and I have a new project I was down to two for a little bit but it's sock madness season so I've got another pair of socks on the go getting closer to half done but I'm making some progress on them so why don't we start with those. These socks, the name of them is Nuppy or Noopy. I'm not sure the pronunciation. It comes from the fact that it has these little nups or noops. I've heard them pronounced both ways, like N-U-P-P, and I honestly don't know how they're pronounced. If anyone can give me some insight into that, please feel free to let me know. Because I honestly am not sure what the correct pronunciation is. But anyway, the name of the pattern is Nuppy or Noopy. And it's a pattern by Mealy Vent. And they're fun. It's a different um, construction. Let me just pop this onto a blocker so you can get a little bit better look at, well, that didn't make much difference. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, you start out the socks with a portion of, of ribbing and then there's this other, this, get out of here you, then there's another section here that's mirrored down here and then this portion here the pattern called for 100 grams of fingering weight yarn plus I think it was 10 or 20 grams of lace weight and in my case the green is the the lace although it's not quite lace this the yellow is yarn I dyed myself it was one of the skeins that I dyed for specifically for my Sock Madness socks. The green is a whole super soft. And I, I think the color might be evergreen, but I I don't have the label still with the, the leftover skein that I had. So anyway, what you do is once you finish this section here, you knit a certain number of rows in just plain stocking it. And then once you've done that part, the stockinette section in the main color, the, in my case the yellow, then you come back and you pick up stitches, you fold 
you fold the knit part up into the cuff and then you pick up with the lace yarn and then you do this lace pattern which I hope it's showing up okay on here yeah I think it's showing up okay so you knit the lace portion and then once the lace portion is done you attach you bring the stockinette portion back out and then you attach the two parts together and then you do a mirror to this portion here over here and then you start into another section of a, a lace design and this is the part that's on the the bottom of the leg and this is a similar design that will go down all the way down the front of the foot so I am at the point now on each of these socks where I am ready to begin the um, the heel flap so it's coming along nicely and it's it's picking up speed now so that's all relative for me that's all relative so this pattern came out on Wednesday in the middle of the night I think it came in like my time zone was like five after two in the morning by supper time early evening I checked on Ravelry and there was already somebody who had finished knitting their socks from when it was released to when I first noticed this it was was it uh, like within 17 hours there was a pair done there must have been smoke coming off those needles seriously there must have been smoke coming off those needles I have been knitting a good part of the day on Wednesday Thursday and Friday <laughs> and I'm getting closer to half done <laughs> there's nobody on my team that has that I'm aware of that have submitted their socks so I might have a chance of making it through to the next round but we have some things going on this afternoon I might not get a lot more time Sunday morning is typically a very busy day with us with church and out for lunch and all that stuff so I typically don't have a lot of knitting time most of the day on sun the first half of Sunday so we shall see how much and then Monday I'm back in the office I'm in the office Monday and Wednesday so we shall see how how far I get with this round but I'm gonna keep plugging along I'm enjoying the knit it's fun it's different I'm learning some new techniques again that's one of the most fantastic things about sock madness is that you learn all sorts of new techniques all sorts of new sock techniques and I love it so those are my sock madness socks and hopefully when I see you again on Saturday, I will have a pair of finished socks to show you. That's, that's, that's the plan. Hopefully, hopefully you'll see a pair of finished socks next weekend. My other work in progress that I picked up and done a little bit of work on. I got a long way to go before this is going to be a sweater. <laughs> this ain't going to cover much of my hide. But... In all seriousness, this is my um, this is my what is it called? Jelly roll. It's from it's based on the jelly roll blanket pattern by Kay Jones, and I'm going to modify it to become a cardigan. I'm making this up as I go. We shall see how it works. So since I saw you last, I added the blue. I had a skein of yarn that was about it's about nine between nine and ten grams so I just wanted to see how far that would go and there we have it I am using fingering weight yarn and I'm holding it double so it's giving me roughly a DK weight I am using can't read that without my glasses I'm using a US 5 or 3.75 millimeter needles for this 
and I'm just using little double points just the two of them I have my fancy little <laughs> needle stoppers they're, ear, they're those foam earplugs I sleep with these kind of earplugs in every night and I buy them in bulk I have a big tub of them each each pair is in a little plastic bag I think it was like a packet of like a, a hundred pairs 200 pair it's a ridiculous amount it's in like a big plastic jug that I have kept in the my bedside bedside table so that is my progress I've added the blue very little progress but hey progress is progress I shall take it I'm going to move the marker so I remember where I was from last time or when I show you it next time so I'm just going to move that from where it was just move it up up here so that's my progress on my little what will eventually become a cardigan I have no idea how long it's going to take me to finish it but it's just a nice little mindless project that I enjoy working on here and there my other work in progress is in my fringe supply I think this was the town bag and in here I have my am I attached what am I attached to here nothing in here I have my coziest memory cardigan and this one I did get a fair bit of progress done on it since I last saw you all the ones that have the little yellow markers on are squares that I've added so I added four more here to finish the second row and then I also added four squares to begin the third row so here's what it's looking like with three rows done so I am using this is the coziest memory blanket pattern this is a pattern by Kemper Ray I am holding the yarn I'm holding fingering weight yarn double in order to get a DK weight I'm using the same size needles that I'm using for the jelly roll blanket slash cardigan so 3.75 millimeter US 5 is that what I said it was I think that's what it was so the yarn I'm using for this I've so far I've only been using yarn from my row one mini subscription so I'm using each Square is roughly seven grams of each of the 10 gram minis that come in the row one mini subscription I should have the April yarn should be arriving it's supposed to arrive today but I'm starting to think it might not be here till tomorrow or Monday and that's okay because I don't have time to look at it until I'm done those socks I have also since I saw you I have tucked in all the ends between rows one and two and I like doing them this way I wait until like here I have the ends in this case here I'm not ready to do anything with those ends until I'm at this kind of point where and I did do a couple on the second between the second and third row but I wait until I have four squares together and then I will weave in the ends so this will have to wait until these two ends are going to have to wait until I've done the fourth row so I might add in I might just tuck in those couple tails soon I'll probably wait until I've completely finished the third row so like I say, I only have four done on here, so I've got another, what have I got, 12 on here? Four. Yeah, I'm doing a total of 12 squares wide, which is going to give enough for fitting around my belly. 
So this will eventually be a cardigan. And I'm going to, for the time being, I'm going to continue adding rows onto this until I have a length that seems right for the length of the cardigan until I get to the armhole where you would want to divide for the armhole. And then I'll have to sit down and think about exactly how I want to work that. I suspect what I will do once I get to the armhole is I will quit, I, I will end up doing the rows that I have now, what I will end up doing is those will continue in three sections. So I will just keep adding onto the back. Um, I'll only use, so it's 12, so I'll only do six squares and keep going across until I have a length that is going to be good to bring up to the back of my neck and up to the shoulder. And then I will do the two front pieces, so there will be three and three, where I will continue adding those. So I think it's probably only going to be from the armhole up to here, it's probably only going to be two or three rows of, of squares. And I'll have to decide what I want to do with the neckline. So I think I might do a couple of the rows I might do instead of doing the square I'll do it in a triangle shape to give it a bit of shape coming in like a v-neck like this t-shirt is. Maybe not quite this deep but a v-neck at least on one maybe two of the squares so that it's not up to, <laughs> like up to the bottom of my neck. So I have to think about how I want to do that haven't quite decided on that. And then I have to think about how I want to do the sleeves. I think what I probably will do is I will just continue adding rows of mitered squares just down the arm until I have enough squares to bring it to a full length sleeve. I don't know if I will taper it down. I doubt it. It'll probably be kind of like a wide There'll be no decrease. I think there's going to be no decreasing or zero decreasing from the largest part of my arm down to my wrist. We shall see. Because I don't quite know how I could taper the mitered squares to have them decreasing as I go down. I can't, I can't kind of visualize how that would work. Then what I will do is I'm going to do a applied i-cord bind off all the way around and then i'll probably leave it open or i might just do little clasp things that attach on either side of the opening and then just hook together as a closure down the front i think that's the plan i think that's the plan so right now i have used squares from december january february and march in of the of the um, row one minis. I used a couple of the squares from the very first from December my first month of the subscription. I used those to make a pair of socks. This pair actually. <laughs> hey, sometimes it's a good thing you don't put things away. So the first four colors so I used six of the colors went into went into the, the card again. I used all of the January ones. The February ones, I think I pulled aside four or five of those colors to go into another pair of, of socks like so, because those were really bright neon colors and I don't want a lot of bright neon colors in this cardigan. There is one really bright neon one in here that might be enough. I don't think I want a lot of bright, really bright neon -y colors in there. Or at least that's the thought right now. And then I've also used several of the March. I think I have four, three or four colors left from March that need to be added into, into the, the cardigan. Um, and then the April ones, which are gonna be arriving. I have the shipping notice. They were shipped earlier in the week. Last I checked, this morning it said they had left the distribution center about an hour's drive away from here. So I'm not sure if they're going to actually make it here today or not, which is fine. 
I will film the un unboxing of that once they do arrive. So that might not be until early next week when I get that film up or that video up. So that is my knitting. I've spent some time on my two existing whips I had coming into the week and I added one more. And I did refrain from starting another pair of socks after I talked to you last weekend. I was awfully tempted, but uh, I showed some restraint. I don't always, I'm not always able to show restraint. <laughs> but it is what it is. So that is my knitting for the week. The other thing, the administrative thing I wanted to talk about with you is I'd said last week I would be drawing the first quarter prize for the hashtag box of socks MAL 2024. I think that's the name of, I think that's the name of the the make along I have and I said I was going to draw some winners from the first quarter so the January February March finished objects so what I did was I put all the numbers or not all the numbers I looked through the finished object thread and there were 101 or 100 entries because the very first one was my introduction to it and that doesn't count so there were 100 entries from January 1st through the last day of March. There's one more in there for April already, but that will that one will be entered next quarter. So I went into the random random number generator and I had it choose three numbers between so there's three prizes. I had it draw three numbers between 2 and 101. So that I had there was the 100 people that had submitted uh, finished socks. So in no specific order, the three winners, oh, and the winners will, what I'll have for the winners is go into Ravelry, send me a private message on Ravelry. I will probably go in there and I'll probably tag each of each of the winners on Ravelry, but send me a private message or direct message on Ravelry and let me know that you you got my message and that you're one of the winners. What the prizes are for each of you, each of you that did win, you have you can go through Ravelry and you can choose any pattern of your liking. It can be one of the patterns I've produced or it can be any other pattern. It can be sock pattern or whatever. Anything $10 US or less in value. And I will gift you that pattern. So each one of the three of you that won so there's one winner. I just drew three, so it's just kind of covers January, February, March. And I'll do the same the other other quarters. I'll draw three. So the winners, I'm gonna put my glasses on to read this. And I'll put your names across the screen here. So the first one that I drew was entry number 32, which was memory 45. M-E-M-E-R-Y 45. So congrats. The second one that the random number generator chose was 16, which is Carrie Ruiz, C-A-R-I-E-R-U-I-Z, or Z, depending whether I'm talking like an American or a Canadian. And the third one is number 48, and that is Mystery Sewer, M-Y-S-T-E-R-Y-S-E-W-E-R. -E -E so, each of the three of you, please send me a private message on Ravelry and let me know which pattern you would like me to gift to you. So any pattern on Ravelry, knit, crochet, socks, whatever, $10 US or under. And let me know and I will get that, I, the, I will gift the pattern to each of, one pattern to each of you that you choose. So, yay! I can't believe there was 100 of you that finished socks and joined up into that little make along. It's just so exciting. I apologize I haven't been very active in there, but I have been looking through and ooing and aahing over all the sock pictures you have been submitting. All of your finished socks. It's just amazing. So, 
keep up the great work. And like I say, I have not been posting pictures of my own socks in there because I don't want to skew the... I don't want to try to figure out how to do random number generator omitting my entries. So, because my entries won't count. I'm not going to give me a prize. <laughs> so, other stuff? Not a lot. It's been a busy week between work and stuff around home and knitting stuff and especially they like say sock madness season I've been busy knitting I'm trying to give my hands oh, I don't know if you just heard that crack that was something in my hand <laughs> I don't know if it was a knuckle or my wrist <laughs> anyway I've been taking a lot of breaks from knitting and like just doing like a little weird finger stretching all that kind of stuff I have plans for a couple non-regular podcast videos that I want to do one is once this round of sock madness is done I'm going to start doing um what I'll probably do it up as one video so it might take a while before you actually get to see it where I'm going to dye. I've got a specific way I want to experiment with dyeing yarn, dyeing a skein of sock yarn. And so I want to do the show the dyeing, show the finished yarn once it's dyed. And then I want to knit a muscle bra hat with that specific yarn. And so I want to do up and show all the steps along the way. So I'm trying to decide if I want to do that as a specific one specific just one specific video kind of like a vlog style of doing it or if I'll do step by step and do it as um, a die slash make along. That might be a fun idea. Have people dye their yarn this a similar way? and then make the hat together huh let me know down below what which you think if you just want to see a vlog style video of what i'm doing with make or dyeing the yarn then doing the knit the hat itself because in that way i can knit the hat and use the entire skein of yarn hmm i gotta think about that so that's that's kind of something I've got noodling around in my my noodler. So that's a that's an idea or a plan. So I should get going. The hubby's going to be up from his nap in a few minutes, and he'll interfere with what I'm doing. And we have to go visit a friend of ours who's in rehab after hip surgery. It's his birthday today, so we want to go and visit him. And then we're the hubby and I are going to go out for. Um, barbecue supper and then I'll get back to working on my socks and we'll watch some TV tonight and fold our laundry. Oh excitement on a Saturday night we're gonna fold laundry together on Saturday night. <laughs> uh, I do not have a life. <laughs> anyway on that note I will let you go and I will talk to you again very soon. Alrighty bye everyone.